Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's your number one fat agent coming to you again with another one of these intriguing FIFA 19 experiences. And today we got another all timer versus all timer. We got all time Netherlands versus all time and current World Cup champions, France. Yes, we're taking these two giants and we're putting them head to head in both a simulation as well as a live action game. If you're excited to see these two world greats face off, then go ahead, smush your heart, erect nibble into that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. But without further ado, let's start with the champs and I present to you the greatest all time French side ever to appear in FIFA, asterisk. That asterisk being as long as they appeared in FIFA 10 and beyond. The main reason for that is if they didn't appear in FIFA 10 and on, they don't have the correct stats that I can plug in and recreate them in this game. And I sadly am American and I simply do not possess enough of the knowledge to go back and take a look at certain players and put in their stats. So unfortunately for France, the big one, you're not gonna be able to see Zinedine Zidane or uh, Platini. And as for the Dutch side, you're not gonna see the likes of like Ronald Koeman. But this year they did add the big boy, Johan Cruyff. And through the power of the cheat engine, as you can see on the screen, we have the icons in the game starting off with Thierry Henry. This is prime moments Thierry Henry, although uh, in FUT he's supposed to come out to a 94, all his stats plugged in, he came out to a 95, he is absolutely a beast. Out on the left side, we have Robert Pires, this is prime moments Pires as well, and then on the right side, we got the youngster, Kelly Mbappe. In the midfield, you got a trio in Paul Pogba, N'Golo Kante, and Patrick Vieira, prime moments Vieira. Then we have prime moments uh, Petit at left back, uh, Blanc, Prime Moments, Desai, Prime Moments, and then Bakary Sanya. <laughs> yeah, right back was the one sore spot in this French side, and apparently Sanya had an 85 rated card, like back in FIFA 10. I plugged those stats in, and he only came out to an 83, which I think is fair for him and his prime. And then in between the sticks, you got Hugo Lloris. On the bench, you got some big boys too that are past their prime. Uh, this is uh, Frank Ribery in his prime, and as you can see, there are a bunch of guys. Like Benzema isn't currently 88 rated either, but for both sides, I went back and I looked at when they were the highest rated in FIFA, and then I plugged them in. So this is Benzema in his prime, this is current Griezmann, uh, this is uh, Trezeguet, this is Sebastian Frey. Do you remember this guy from way, way back? He had an 89 rated keeper card back in FIFA 10. You got uh, Matuidi, you got Um Titi, you got Pavard, who's a little bit lower rated. Honestly, he should be like higher rated. He had a fantastic World Cup, probably scored the goal of the tournament. Now got Rafael Ron, one of the best young uh, center backs in the game. Uh, you got Nicholas Anelka, who's a recreation. He had like a 90 card back in FIFA 10. Olivier Giroud, much more like a character for a lot of people, but he it's undoubtedly has scored some pretty crucial goals for France. Then you got flashback Payet, and then you got Patrice Evra, who I might sub in during the actual game uh, instead of Bakary Sanya. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if Patrice Evra actually got an icon card a little bit down the road. In fact, this whole entire starting lineup, I mean, it's primarily icons already, but I could see Evra, Kante, Papa, Mbappe, and Hugo Lloris all getting icon cards in the future. It's an incredibly strong side, but how does it compare to the all-time Netherlands team? Oh baby, and up top is prime moments Johan Cruyff coming into a 96. And just this strike force up top is immense. Alongside him is prime moments Marco Van Basten, arguably one of the greatest strikers to ever live. Then in the midfield, you got prime moments Bergkamp, you got Clarence Seedorf and Rude Hullet. All of them the prime moments version. And then it gets a little bit tricky in the back line. Yes, I know a lot of you Holland fans should be saying they should be playing 4-3-3. That's what they're known for. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of great fullbacks. And because of that, I've kind of floated into a more 3-5-2 formation where I have wingers essentially playing wingback. It's not ideal, but it gets the best players for the Netherlands onto the pitch. So at the right wingback position, we have Iron Rob. I don't know how good of a job he's gonna do defensively, but offensively, absolute flyer. And then on the left side, you have icon Mark Overmar. Then the back line, you have what many people consider is the best center back in the world currently, and by many people, I mean Liverpool fans, and that is Virgil van Dijk. I'm kidding, he's good. Then you have a past legend card for De Boer. I think he was a legend card in like 17 or 16. The last center back is Frank Reichardt. And in between the sticks is Manchester United legend, Edwin van der Sar. And Nellens are actually represented really well icon wise. You got Daddy Clivert, you got Ruud van Nisselrooy. Uh, then you have Van der Vaart, who I upgraded to when he was in his prime. Flashback Huntelaar. Uh, van Persie went in his prime. This is Stecklenburg when he was in his prime. Uh, I recreated Wesley Snyder back in his prime. This is a slightly toned down version of Dirk Cow. <laughs> his farewell card. 
Uh, you got Daily Blend in his prime. Uh, you got Dry, current Dry, current Silicon, and then current Delict. Delict only 80, but I think all signs are pointing to him to becoming eventually one of the best center backs in the world. Basically, the Mbappe of defenders. So, an incredibly strong starting lineup and an amazing attackers. The issue is defensively, can they hold up with essentially a three in the back formation, which traditionally in this experiments have been kind of a death knell. But now we sit on July 1st of 2018. This is the start of the season. We are going to sim all the way to the end and see which team finishes on top. So let's go over to June 1st right here and start some of that up. As for me to remain neutral, we shall be simming in the Bundesliga and I shall be represented by RB Leipzig. And now you guys can go ahead and vote up in the eye thingies. Which team do you think will come out on top of the full season sim? As well as I have to go ahead and make a prediction. Now if I get the prediction right, then nothing bad happens to me. But if I get the prediction wrong, I have to do some type of forfeit. And I've been doing this for a while now. And that is giving away some subs over on my Twitch channel. If you don't know my Twitch, I'll plug it over here because this is what I do on the Twitch. I actually come and I make these teams. So if you have any suggestions for future teams that I should be doing, either hit me up on the Twitch or hit me up on the Twitters down here. And that's at Bmont. So kudos to everyone who helped me out on Twitch as well as Twitter to create both of these teams. And as for my prediction on who is going to win in the Sim portion, I'm going to go with France. And the reason for that is they got four in the back. And I'm, I'm sorry! Netherlands fans, this is all I could do to put the best players onto the pitch at the same time in your starting 11. But both teams are so closely matched in talent that I, I gotta go with the one that has the more traditional defensive backline. So yeah, I'd like to be surprised, but that's what I'm going with for now. Take it away, Time Wizard. Go Time Wizard! All right, so we sit on June 1st of 2019. Let's go ahead and see how the players finish at the end of the season. Start with the player stats, and it is Nicolas Anelka of France who comes out on top. In fact, it is a four, no, it's a three-way tie between him, Kevin Volland, and Rude Hullet, all getting 18 apiece. So I guess we'll split that one. Uh, then you got Thierry Henry, who scored 12, and then you got Dirk Hout, who comes in with 11. Going down the list, you got a couple more French boys. What? Apparently they bought Sané? PSG bought Leroy Sané, and he's on here. So, why are you cheating, France? And then they got Kelly Mbappe, who also contributed 10. In assists, it is the Dutch side who come out on top with Wesley Siner providing nine assists. Uh, underneath him, you have Dimitri Payet providing six, as well as Nicholas and Elsa getting five. Uh, we get on the list, Raphael van der Vaart had five as well. And then uh, two more, one from France, Leroy Sané, once again, cheaters, France. Getting five and Dirk Hout getting five. And then if we go over to clean sheets, it is Sebastian Frey. They didn't even start Lloris for the majority of their matches. Sebastian Frey wins the Golden Glove with 12 clean sheets. Um, and then you got Edwin Van Der who had nine. So all in all, I probably would give a slight advantage to France. We finished in 13th. Let's go here, top four. Leverkusen, Frankfurt in third, Ajax in second, and oh my god, France! And what? France and the Netherlands had the same points! 78 points a piece at the top, and it comes down to goal differential. Wow, this is the closest I've ever seen. I think in any experiment that I've done through all the course of, like, all these years of doing experiments, France having a goal differential of 52 to Ajax's, let me do some quick math, 44. I'm Asian, you can trust my math. But yeah, just by the slightest of margins. And in all honesty, defensively, um, considering, you know, one had four in the back, the other one had three in the back, or five in the back, if you wanna make that argument. It was only a two goal differential. Honestly, I don't even know if you can call this an outright win. I think this has to be decided by the live gameplay portion. Go time with it! All right, here we go, boys. All-time France versus all-time Netherlands. Legendary A at a neutral ground. We're going to play it at the San Siro. We're going to see both historic sides walk out onto the pitch. Laurent Blanc leading his side. Well, Johan Cruyff on the other. And you guys can go ahead. Vote up in the other thing is right now on which team you think is going to win the live action portion. This time, I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to go with the Netherlands. I think the Netherlands are going to win this outright just because Johan Cruyff is an absolute animal. Every single time I've seen him in these sim competitions, he knew these flick ups to these outrageous goals. And plus he's got Marco Van Basten next to him. But this is going to be spicy. So many legends and future legends taken to the pitch right here. Look at this lineup, man. Beautiful. Thank God for the cheat engine. And look at this. I've never seen so many tucked in shirts. Two giant nations in the world of football about to match up. So many creative forces, so many beautiful memories. Let us begin. Virgil van Dijk, that's too easy for him. He's under pressure though. Oh, Frank DeBoer. 
We're just gonna go with it. Oh no, Devor! <laughs> Passed it right to Pablo, who took a shot instantly. But Edwin Vandersar, this is the Manchester to Manchester connection right here. Almost a perfect pass to Pogba, and he was off target on that one, to be honest. But forces the first corner of the game, could go short to Conte, who doesn't have the best cross on him. But he's going to play it to Henri! <laughs> going for the audacious. Out on the outside, Petit linking up as well. Plays the floor to Pogba, who's got a bit of space in front of him. Goes to the cross to mid! Oh! It's a shot on target! Virgil van Dijk able to clear it. What are we going to do here? Iron Robin shepherds it away. Oh, terrible giveaway in their own half. Henri, what is he going to do here? Gets it, shoots right at Edwin van der Sar. He plays it back. Again, kind of negative football from the Netherlands. But this is their first kind of trot forward. Dennis Burkamp, who's low in stamina. Where is he going to go with this? Still holds it. Oh, beautiful ball over the top. Beautiful football. And just like that, the Dutchman go ahead and light it up. Simply Barreto ideas against the run of play. Look at this beautiful over the top ball. First time to Johan who sneaks it past Patrice Evra and Hugo Lloris. Lovely volley from one of the greats. And that's what I was saying. That's why I went with Netherlands, man. Johan, Johan, that's a bad dude. That is a bad man right there. Wow, scintillating stuff. One of the prettier goals in a, quite frankly, completely ugly game. All right. Let's see what they can do. Pogba! Once again, going for that flick up shot. Not, has not been working out for him, and that's going to be halftime 1 0. And yeah, when I said it was against the run of play, you could <laughs> look at the match facts. France has zero goals, but they have six shots. They have two shots on target. They've dominated almost 60% of the possession. <laughs> well, the Netherlands have one shot. One shot on target and one goal while only possessing 40%. So basically a typical foot map. But there is a lot of game to play, a lot of substitutions that can be made in this second half. First substitution plays Matuidi out as we get a corner in here. Only as far as De Boer who puts it over to Cruyff. Oh! All right, we got another substitution. Hillian Mbappe comes off for Frank Ribéry. Uh, Wesley Snyder on for Dennis Bergkamp. Interest, gonna run it down the line here. No one's really gonna close him down. Where he's going to go, tries to cut inside, Marco Van Basten, plays it forward to the back post, Oh, jutted four for a second, but only is four, it's Wesley Snyder, whose first touch of the game, puts the Dutchman up 2-0, oh my god. Alright, so not the best Wesley Snyder recreation model, <laughs> we'll admit. And once again, another first time volley, he can fire those ones in. Wesley Snyder puts the Dutchman in a commanding position. 65th minute, still a lot of time to play. Sloppy in the midfield, but he grabs onto that, wins it back. Oh, over to Pires! Uh, Haba has been mercurial in the midfield, sometimes producing something great. Oh, that is not the best from Van der Sar, but De Boer, crucial interception, calamitous stuff in the back line. We got a corner, Overmar sends it in. Blanc is there, but it's cleared off of the line. Petit, they saw Pogba. Oh, just France are that close. They're just that far away. He's going to flip it up to Rude Hullet, who nods it down to Snyder. Oh, my God. Oh, dear. <laughs> if that would have gone in. Bro, look at this. Just header to header. Going Ronaldinho. Hull it, you naughty boy. Plays it forward to Pires. Gives it to Pogba, who lets it run past him. Plays it off constantly to him. To, to Henri off of the post. It's just not... It is not France's day. Pull it to Snyder. Up four to Van Basten. Slop you with it, but it doesn't matter. And that is going to be it, boys. It took a little while to get into it. And despite France constantly battering the back line, the three in the back of um, the Netherlands, through a bit of creative magic and some sweet ass volleys between the likes of Wesley Snyder and Johan Cruyff, Netherlands goes ahead and gets an improbable win. So I got that prediction right. You know what? Hell, I'll give away two free subs on the Twitchy Poos to go ahead and check me out over there. As well as, I want you guys to go ahead and vote up on the eye things on which teams, which all time teams you would like to see next. And I also have this idea of just doing an all time super tournament with all the great countries and they'll face off one on one. And eventually we will crown the greatest all time team to ever appear in FIFA. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this all time experience. If you wanna check out the last one, it's a goodie, it's a goodie. Go ahead and click over here, Dingsy Poos. Or if you wanna try something a little bit different, this is my China Ruins Everything Career Mode. It's a bit wacky. But yeah, that's it for me. Be modest. Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. Remember to see yourself. Stay humble. Until next time, guys. Stay thick.